Hello everybody, I'm Chris Sims from ComicsAlliance.com, and if you think you know comics, here's a few facts you might not know about Batman. There are a lot of misconceptions about the Dark Knight floating around, and one of them that's popped up recently has been the idea that Batman only uses his money to fight street-level crime and doesn't attack the root causes of criminal activities by donating to charity. And that really hasn't been the case for over 50 years. Bruce Wayne first founds a charitable organization in the pages of Detective Comics number 328 in 1964. And back then, it was called the Alfred Foundation, named in honor of Batman's faithful butler who had died saving Batman and Robin. Now, obviously, Alfred didn't really die. He turned into a crime boss called the Outsider who had a horribly disfigured monster body and could not remember his role as the Batman's aide-de-camp at all. Fortunately, Batman was able to rescue him, and in 1966, Detective Comics number 356, for those of you keeping score at home, the Alfred Foundation became the Wayne Foundation, an all-purpose organization for the betterment of mankind. For more specific purposes, Bruce Wayne founded an organization called Victims Incorporated a few years later in 1969 in Batman number 217 that was designed specifically to help the victims of violent crime. You know, like young Bruce Wayne, whose parents were murdered in an alley. You might have heard of it or seen it a couple dozen times in movies and television shows. Victims Inc. was a plot point for a while, but modern incarnations of the Dark Knight generally just keep things simple by sticking to the Wayne Foundation. It's worth noting that in Detective Comics 871, much more recently, Dick Grayson used his share of the Wayne fortune to fund a high-tech lab for the cops that they never used because they were a little jealous of Batman. But hey, the cops had their own Batcave, that's pretty cool. So what about the idea that Batman is a loner? Well, like most comic book characters who are referred to as loners, that's not really the case. He's probably the biggest family man in superhero comics, and it starts on day one. In Detective Comics number 27 in 1939, where Batman made his first appearance, we also get the first appearance of Jim Gordon, commissioner of the GCPD and Batman's most stalwart ally in the fight against crime. You could say that that's just because it's useful for a crime fighter to have an ally on the police force, but just over a year later, in April of 1940, Batman's family expands a little more with the addition of Robin, the sensational character find of the day. From that moment on, Batman's quest to battle evil has been joined by more than a few sidekicks and assorted hangers-on over the years. Alfred actually shows up just a few years later in 1943's Batman No. 16, although it's worth noting that he was initially more of a hindrance to crime fighting than a help. Bruce and Dick tried to keep their identity secret from a guy who lived in their house and cleaned all their stuff, so that didn't really work out. From there, the family just kept growing. The original Batwoman shows up in Detective Comics 233 in 1956, joined shortly thereafter by the original Batgirl, the one with the hyphen, back in 1961, and then, of course, Barbara Gordon made the scene in 1967 and became the most popular character to ever wear that name. So, all in all, that's a pretty big family for a loner. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Comics. Make sure to subscribe, like Comics Alliance on Facebook, follow Comics Alliance on Twitter, and get the latest comic news on comicsalliance.com.